Gravity or FX. Friday is here. 7th of December. Here we are for our 681st non-farm payrolls. Or whatever. Whatever 30 years of this nonsense is. Um, so it should be fun today. Uh, as always, uh, we'll take the morning reflect on what we think is going to happen. We'll run a few scenarios. You can see the Asian rap did a very nice job today uh, talking about possible scenarios, what's going to happen, average hourly earnings, what's going to happen on the actual headline number. I'm not going to take a guess on what's happening, but I do applaud their efforts in just creating scenarios in advance so you're comfortable and sometimes just plain lucky. So, say you decide to take a scenario uh, plus 400 and, and average hourly earnings unchanged, or plus 400 and hourly, average hourly earnings very hot, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And then say that exact scenario happens just by chance. Because you've gone over it in your head beforehand, uh, things become automatic, things are quicker, you don't have to react, you just act. Uh, that doesn't happen too often um, because you're just guessing at these numbers, but if you have a couple scenarios in mind, if you spend some time and say, okay, if this is, if this is a hot one, I'm going to do this, if this is a cold one, I'm going to do this, if this is a medium one, I'm going to do this. And then you have to decide for yourself what your focus is going to be, whether it's on uh, average hourly earnings or the headline number. There's a lot of permutations, uh, and one of the reasons a lot of people suffer on these days is they don't put in the, the, the mental work beforehand, and they just react to the number, you know, like a monkey. Anyway. Uh, let's have a look at the charts and we'll see what we can pull from all of this. Euro back in the center here. We traveled all the way up to uh, 13 yesterday. Um, now we're just confirming that this week has been useless in Euro. 100 point range for the week. Traded down to 10, 113.10, 114.10. Obviously the Bush Memorial holiday did take some volatility out of it, but, you know, we're set on either side. Truck prices above 114.20 with a story uh, is important, and price, prices below 113, the figure with a story is important. Today is a story day, because we have non-farms, there's your story, so you're kind of set on which way you're going to go or not really which way it's going to go. You're set saying you don't really need to bother trading this until we get through one side or the other. Dollar Yen retraced after trading all the way down to 21. Um, up to 92 tonight. Trading at 91 now. We thought we were on to something there yesterday. Sold in the 70s. Um, but then as stocks turned we just we just squared it up, and so it was fine. Uh, grabbed a little bit of money, as was normally, you know, as we, I wouldn't say sort of expected, because we weren't really sure what was going to happen once we got through 30, but once we started fluttering back up above 30, it became clear that, you know, pre-non-farm, no one's going to carry a big position, or none of the short-term money, which is what I would consider what we are. Uh, is going to carry positions into non-farm, so it's in our best interest to square. So this is sort of in the middle as well, um, not quite as well defined. A few trend lines here. You could draw this line if you wanted to. It's not amazing, but um, this kind of defines sort of the last six months. The support comes in at 112, the figure. Um, but again, this will this will be driven by the number. So, in your scenarios, you should probably have a dollar yen uh, 
and the euro dollar since those are the best liquidity trades in play for non-farms. Let's look at bonds. They've had a real extended period of love yesterday up to 143.29. How do you like them apples? Wow. Wish I had sold sold up there. Now it's a point lower at 142.29. Um, if NFP's hot, you want to smash bonds. This is just a classic short squeeze in one of the most over-owned positions uh, around. Uh, we've now kind of almost filled this little gap here, although you got to be careful of these gaps because the change in contract uh, it's not the same as a, as a intra-quarter gap. But almost got to this sort of resistance zone 14410 um, if it's a hot one you can smash bonds and that'll just be fun because that's a that trade makes sense it makes sense for everybody there's no real reason that 30 year, 30 year yields should be sitting at uh, 313 it doesn't pass the grandma test uh, and so it's a nice logical trade that everyone feels comfortable with. So keep an eye on uh, ZB today if it's a hot one. Uh, what else? Kiwi, not too much. Aussie, uh, you know, we've been told reliably there's five yards of 7250s out here. Uh, I believe it was the guys from uh, HSBC who kind of talked about that. Um, so I would avoid Aussie today, just because there's so many. This, or check the option strikes. I haven't, I, I haven't actually checked it, but have a look at the option expiries today. I think there's a whopper in Aussie, so you want to avoid Aussie if there is, um, and maybe use Kiwi and Dollar Cat as more of a proxy. I'm kind of babbling because there's not really, uh, not really a ton I can say except for spend your morning thinking about possible scenarios. I'll check back in uh, a couple hours before, see where the actual price is, because that also makes a difference, uh, where price is and which currencies look vulnerable, um, and I'll just leave it at that, and wish you luck on this December non-farm non -farm payrolls. Have a good day trading, people. I will uh, talk to you.